Robert Fritz's Structural Consulting Channel. What this is, we present full structural consultations, ones that change people's lives. The idea behind this channel is for you to witness a completely different understanding of the human condition. Here are a few things to know. Structural consulting is not therapy. It is an exploration of the underlying structures in the client's life that produces predictable patterns of behavior. What is structure? Structure is a combination of elements that impact each other. In these sessions, the client's structures are a combination of what they want to create, how reality actually is, and the various concepts that they have. The concepts clients have are usually hidden from them but these concepts have impact in influencing the client's life patterns. A change of structure will cause a change of the client's patterns. The principle, the underlying structure of anything will determine its behavior. The process involves seeing the actual patterns in the client's life, which leads to a better understanding of the client's underlying structure. The sessions last between one or two hours. We suggest that if you do decide to watch them, do so when you have time to see the entire process. If you want to see more structure consultations, subscribe to the channel. And here is the session. Okay, so what do you want to talk about? Ah. <laughs> um... You know, I think I think um, when I first responded to the the video, it was the the email, your newsletter, and got in touch. It was about just not being sure about whether I was, um, you know, whether I'd rate. I feel like there's bigger things to go for, but somehow along the way, I I either sabotage myself by doubting what it is I'm after, or questioning what my real desire is, or um playing small because i think i think from way back i felt that if you if you become too powerful or big you, you'll do destructive things so there's a sort of in a way um i don't know if i've quite because i did those exercises um of, of trying to come up with those stories um that was quite useful to to reflect on some issues that I would say are, you know, recurring patterns or, um, yeah. why do you, why do you think, um, or do you still think that if you become too powerful, you would, uh, misuse it? Um, I think rationally now, no, I don't think that's the case. I think that was, I was, mm. yeah, that was a sort of a, a hiding out excuse for a while. I think as much as anything, when I think back to film school days, I found film school very the opposite of liberating experience. It was almost like we were we went we entered the National Film School at a time when the regime had been changed, and there was a there was very much a sort of um, it had gone from being a very liberal find your voice kind of institution to uh, decide what you want to do. There's no discovery allowed. It's it's we're going to measure you and uh, make sure you you graduate on exactly the path you set out to yeah. embark on. So even though I'd had a lot of directing and a little bit of writing and producing background camera background, they wanted me to produce and do nothing else. So, um, and I did do other things outside of film school, but it was one of those, the, the guy who ran the course then um, had been a, a top bureaucrat in the Danish film bureaucracy and he just came in to sort of rationalize it and graduate people and yeah. turn it more into a business so yeah i think i think i came out of there um almost traumatized about the idea of trying to find my voice and now i feel a bit more mature about that i'm thinking when well, i'm old enough now to just you know find, you know it's a combination of yeah what does that mean to you to find your voice why why is that why is that uh how, what do you even mean by that you know, I think I think it's um, actually yeah, that's a really good that is a good question because I suppose what I've found in the past, whenever I do something that is 
expressive and creative like the sculpting. I don't know if you had a chance to look at the link. They were wonderful. I thought they were great. Um, that was a complete, dis I discovered sculpting by total chance. Yeah. And, um, but I was the sort of thing that when I do it, it was time stop still. I was just in the moment. I was in the flow. I just had to, even though I'd been given this gift of a first look deal, mm. <laughs> I wasn't busy making the most of that. I was busy using it to take well, it down. Um, I did a first stab at a pattern based on that story. So let's go through it. And what we'll do is we'll check it against other stories and see if it's actually, you know, true to form. And then, then uh, if it is, then we'll uh, look for what is the underlying structure that gives rise to this pattern. Yeah. You know what we're what we're really doing is the end. Really, we'll start with the understanding of the underlying structure of anything determines its behavior. Yeah, and there are certain patterns. Some patterns are oscillating, and some patterns are advancing. And the ones that are oscillating are driven by various concepts you may have in relationship to desires and aspirations, and so on and so on. And um, so, uh, first, let's just look and see if the pattern is uh, accurate. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of a different story than the one that you gave me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just ask you, you know, did this happen? Did this happen? And and uh, so do you, do you have a specific story in mind? Um, let me have a quick think. Were you set out for something? You had it for period of time but at the, at the end you no longer had it and it wasn't like a good ending um could be a relationship could be a business thing could be a project yeah definitely i mean well there was um i and guess let me just say don't don't try to fit it into a pattern just i just need that form of you set out for it you had it for a while you no longer had it, not a good ending. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, there is, there was a, you know, my first marriage. Okay, let's try it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had an opportunity and a desire. Yeah. Uh, you felt hesitant and that it was somehow a compromise. Yes. It was okay at first. Yes. And you got more involved. Absolutely. And then um, there were some some prospects that looked good. Yeah. But there was something missing. Yeah. And then you got resentful. Yeah. And then there was some kind of structural change or the game changes. Uh, yes. And nothing worked. That's right. And then you're out or quit or yeah that's or, right yeah okay yeah. so you did every step in that pattern for sure yeah yeah can you think of another story different um, story? you know this is the category of when you set out for something and, and yeah really yeah well i guess my first my first job would be okay uh, wait let me let me just don't tell me anything about it i want to just okay yeah you know, opportunity or desire was there yes uh you were hesitant and it somehow was a compromise yes um was okay at first yeah and then you got more involved yes and then there were some uh prospects that were good yeah and then but there was something missing sure and then you got resentful yeah and then there was some kind of structural change where the game changed um yeah and then nothing worked yeah and then you quit or you it was out you you yeah. got quit. yeah yeah okay so that's most likely your pattern um and in both cases you did every step so there's three stories now you've done every step of that pattern um and by the way, isn't that amazing to see these patterns like bam to bam to bam to bam to bam? Absolutely. <clears throat> and they're and it's funny, as you said, the prompt, mm. the exact image of what it was came into my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it happened. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, um, the question I asked you before is, why do you have to find your own voice? What does that even mean to you? Yeah, I'm not even sure what that means now mm. uh, and how, because I, I did about, I think when I made that shift to getting into TV, mm. and I mentioned it was as much to do with um, a practical, it was rather than throw away all of my producing or, or filmmaking skills to date, I thought I'm going to shift direction and make something happen partly for family, partly for life to be a bit easier. But also I realized that it's as much about um, making good things with good people that I care about and, you know, making stuff yeah. that I care about with people that I care about. Well, you like that. And I like that. And that yeah. was, that was a revelation because when I was uh, early on in film school, I thought it was all about finding my voice. And if I was thwarted, then it was me against others. And I was probably yeah. in a very, competitive frame of mind mm -hmm. not even realizing it but actually projecting that perhaps and 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 seeing it everywhere rather than looking for great things i mean i'm simplifying slightly but i think the no, but, I, but i think you're you're describing <clears throat> excuse me a before and after um where and the after is that you became a professional yeah yeah and the before was it was really about you and how you see yourself in the world mm -hmm. is that right i think so yeah what what is it um do you still um have thoughts about um so i have to separate aspiration on the one hand you know <clears throat> from wanting to be a big shot or be a star or, you know, on the other hand, they're not the same thing, but they can look very similar. Mm -hmm. But the underlying motivation is quite different. So mm -hmm. um, do you still have any of that lurking in the background of, you know, that you're not living up to um, what your talent to says you should be doing? Um, you mean rather than just pure aspiration, is there anything in there that's saying I should be a bigger shot than I am? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, and you know that kind of thing. And yeah, some... I think I mean it's a lot less, but I notice um, I almost get fed up with reading the trades, you know, like uh, Screen International, Broadcast, Hollywood Reporter, those kind of magazines. That it's just this constant ticker tape of everyone else is doing so much better than you are. That <laughs> kind of yeah 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 and i tried to manage that and push it away and um and it kept, you know it get it gets through some of it and then i have to <laughs> well you know why because you still have that going on yeah <clears throat> but you have a strategy to reduce the conflict um but it's not so if you didn't have that going on you could read a lot read all that stuff and say so what yeah, yeah. And, and not be comparing yourself to what you should be, you know, look at all these people doing this stuff, and I'm only doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's not as bad as it used to be, but it's, it's, it's only as... because you you have a better strategy to nullify, it. you know, it, you're, you're hiding it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's look at that, though. I mean, that's, that's where um, in the underlying structure of your pattern and I even like from step two, you know, you feel like you're hesitant and it feels like a compromise. And um, from, from step one in the pattern, you're in the structure, by the way. It isn't like, oh, you're here and then you find, you know, you got, you kind of tripped into a different structure. It's from step one that right off the bat, um, you're measuring yourself against the opportunity. Not in terms of 
are you able to do it, but more in terms of what does it mean to you? What, it, what will it make you, what will it render you in a way? Mm. Is that correct? Um, what did, I've, I've, I was in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I can't remember all of those steps. And, and I'm thinking, oh, will I get- No, I'm just talking about the first step, first two yeah. steps. You know, you get offered something and you're hesitant. And, the, and, the, and it feels like a, a bit of a compromise. It's almost like what you want to do, but not right in the... Um. Well, I mean, there's a way that you described your life just then that sounds like an acquies acquiescing acquiescing to um it's not exactly a compromise but it's sort of like um not it you know I mean, it's got good benefits and it's, 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 it's it has good benefits yeah yeah but, but it isn't yeah. that kind of thing yeah i i think there's something going on in my head that if i if i pursue whatever it is i'm not even sure it is i want to pursue then i will end up not having an income not having a you know not having a basis for survival and um, yeah. and if i just relied on my talent as opposed to my strategy mm. or strategic thinking, then I would end up, yeah. Yeah, you're afraid, you're afraid you're gonna run away and join the circus. Yeah, <laughs> which I did once, more or less. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the basic be, notion is you can't really do what you want. You just have to do what's offered and what's on the menu. And that's what you're gonna have is what's on the menu. And because if you went after what you really wanted, you wouldn't make it. Yeah, that's a bit of that going on. Yeah. But but I have to say, it's also, you know, I'm just reading your, I'm still working through the, um, my life as art, which is great, by the way, really loving it. The um, the section, I'm, I'm only about 60 pages in, but that thing of, um, <clears throat> um, you know, it's not a thing out there that you're going to bump into one day and, uh it's it's you know something you love just because you love it um so i'm sort of thinking about that a fair bit and i think i i, I, th I keep thinking i will i if I, I will find the passion um i also know that from doing you do g generate passion obviously um but um, well if you if you read further in my that book and other books i've written i i don't think much about passion I, no no book. no exactly yeah and I, <laughs> I totally I think, uh, relate to that because I can do my best work just because I've shown up and yeah. I'm then ready to keep going with it because I want to keep going with it. Um, and some days you're passionate, some days you're not. Yeah, I, I'm, the reason I'm not in favor of it as a motivator is because it relies too much on your emotions. Yeah. And what do you do on days when you don't have passion? Yeah. You, you know, but what I, what I really like is an organizing principle or choices you know, the choices you make. Yeah. And particularly to organize your life around those things that matter most to you. And um, I'm wondering what matters most to you at this point. And you may not know, by the way. No. You, you may not have, the, oh, it's bam to bam to bam. It might be something quite amorphous, like running away and joining the circus. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but, to start to really consider, you know, how, how do you, it's your life. I mean, how do you want to live it? How do you want to organize your life? Yeah. I mean, there's certainly um, one element is health because uh, I've been aware of, um, I think about, about eight years ago, I had a kind of work situation that was very toxic. It was in between producing i was exact producing and running a fund and mm -hmm. had a very 
horrible exit with a very s s toxic boss. Um, and, and I was aware then that, that all of this, I want to do this and that is nothing compared to your health. And then, and, you know, in the conversation I've started with you around the, the plant thing is, is I realize the more, when I have energy, I, and just looking at you as an inspiration, you know, you, you, as I said to you, I'd, if I, I was just shocked by your age and uh, the vitality you have, and I just thought it's not possible. So it's that really, you know, to have more life in my years is what I'm going for. And then I think yeah. I will steadily, yeah, all the other stuff will come as the gift. So that is much more a priority right now than it was. Well, it's only a priority because you think it's at issue. It, 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 it ought to be just more of a prerequisite. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so that's just a basic mm. foundational thing and it's okay to work on as a goal. Yeah. Um, but at a certain point you'll have it. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll, you'll have an optimal level of health, which then becomes uh, part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, just to uh, in people, case, case people are uh, wondering how old I am. I'm 78 years old. But I color my hair. That's that's what I do. <laughs> at least I did uh, wonder that. But uh, the lady, the lady at the at the barbershop or the salon covered colors my hair. And uh, no, but uh, I do have like uh, as much energy as I did when I was thirty. Yeah, that's great. But the no, okay. So health's important, but what else? I mean, what what is it that you're after? Um. Well, there's there's um there's a bigger there's a bigger goal I suppose I want to I do want to create there's a series I want to create with there's a there's a writer that I'm working with who was upon whose material the uh, the Vorman problem was based mm -hmm. um, and we are collaborating on something which would be a Japan set series and I would say I've really got a strong feeling that that would it would be at such a, a creative mm -hmm. euphoric feeling to get that off yeah. the ground um and that's okay. and it would be through my own company rather than as a producer for hire so that 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 is a genuine i can genuinely i mean we're in touch a lot and i can genuinely always yeah having thoughts about it and and i, but I want to s steer it so i just i could just i could just see it off in the future as something that would make such a huge crowning difference to my produce it would how many uh you say off in the future what what are we thinking about uh like One end of years. um uh, uh, shooting and uh, shooting sort of early 23 really um okay. and you know would it be uh a japanese production no it would be an in international uh production with yeah. half japanese elements um uh -huh. it's set in japan but it will be it'll have it'll have strands mm -hmm. elsewhere and um good okay yeah it sounds, it sounds so, great. There's, so there's that and also i would say you know <laughs> there are some in my in my family life there are some areas where i'd like to uh you know further develop my relationship with with my partner and um there's some areas that you know we're not we're not quite happy with that we want to develop Mm -hmm. so that remains a an important goal what is it that you think is missing um well it's it's it is Anyone, i'm asking you this question why because everything looks fine except you don't um you know on the on the surface it looks really fine and yet there's this kind of, um, you know, something else is there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I tell you, I'm not, I'm not imagining that it's, it really is from you and you may not know what it is and probably you don't, but that's our job is to sort of explore. What is that thing that, um, makes you dissatisfied or you know not quite i i don't know exactly know how to describe it well 
it's a tinge of something, you know, it's like a coloration. In your pattern, you hesitate, it feels like a compromise, and there's something missing. And even though you're going through the motions and maybe even more than going through the motions, really being involved um, on a pretty high level, there's some feeling this, that this ain't it, which means that um, there must be an idea that there is an it. Yeah. And this ain't it but there is one. And so you're, you're comparing, it must be that you're comparing uh, what you've got to what you think it should be. And let's take it from the standpoint of your age, you know, like where should you be at your age kind of thing, you know, do you have- Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of, um, I, I was thinking too, in terms of the way you <clears throat> uh, compare yourself to what other people are doing in the industry yeah and somehow, and somehow feeling regret yeah it's almost like um as i go for something yeah i think I, I, it's very easy to look back and think oh i should have played it differently but i did i did take i do tend to take my foot off the accelerator when things are going describe well. Describe it that way. I, I noticed that in your other stories, you describe it that way. Yeah. You take your foot off the accelerator, which means somehow you have to push because if you don't push it, it's going to fall apart. So there's this kind of um, left to its own devices. Yeah. It, it ain't good. And there's got to be some concept that you have that you can't leave things that are on the devices and it's somehow that you're the one who has to drive it yeah oh. i don't know i think this is i think what happens in that scenario is that i work so hard that then i think i kind of almost probably reach burnout thinking that it is all on my shoulders and actually that it's linked to the health element when i the, the two series that i just produced I was aware on both of them that there, I reached a point where I felt ill and um, yeah. like indigestion, thinking it was heart trouble, you know, is that kind of like, but it was actually just, it was bad indigestion, but it was that sort of taking it all on. And, and in a way it makes me a great guy to hire because I'll take it, I'll run the show, but no, actually. You, you know, you may be a good from their point of view to hire you, but I wouldn't think it's good to hire you at all from the point of view of if the, if it's long running, you're going to run out of steam. Yeah. And, you know, you think about the series uh, that you're thinking about in Japan, that would definitely be an example of something you want to be long running. Yeah. 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 So you can't keep going in that, that, that strategy won't work long term. No, no, for sure. So, you know, in this case, you you know, you get in there, you do it out, you get out in time, you know, get away with it in a way. <laughs> and then crash and burn. Yeah. Although typically what happens is I hit a there's a there's a middle there is a midpoint where it's everything's then set up and I understand the tool. I understand you know, I know where everything is, I know how the politics are working, I know how the yeah. I know where our strengths are and weaknesses in the show, who the creator, you know, who's creatively. Yeah, because, and that's your professionalism. Yeah. But we're, in a way, we're not talking about your professionalism. You know, you're good at your job. We, what we could say is you're good at your job. And there's a way that you approach your job to be good at it. That's not healthy. Yeah. 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 Um, Why do you um, play it that way versus, let me, let me give you another scenario that's a possibility, uh, which is not a 
designed to be a solution to the problem, but just to, to give you a contrast. Mm -hmm. I mean, another way you could play it is create uh, a adequate capacity around you so that you don't have a workload capacity uh, imbalance. And um, that so as you move in time, you can rely more and more. So the, bur the, the, the managerial burden um, then gets distributed on more shoulders and your life gets easier and easier as you go forward rather than harder and harder. Yeah. But that's not what you do. There's a way you take it on that um, is about somehow how you think about these things that you're not necessarily, in fact, you would not be directly aware of it. It's a compensation. It's a compensating strategy for something that we haven't named but that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a, in a broad sense, uh, I mean, I've just recently finished a funding application for, a, for to, to expand my company to bring on a team, you know, to help me do more yeah. for my for, for my own company. But, um, and it's true that when I'm a producer for hire, I have a team around me, but it doesn't stop me from perhaps over taking yeah. on bits that I could learn to, you know. And, the, and the question is, okay. you, you, you're describing the behavior really well. And now the question is, why do you do that? Yeah, I feel it's, um, it's approving. It's um, looking for validation. It's almost like uh, okay. people pleasing. It's looking for praise it's it's all of why those do you, why do you want praise what, what would that do for you i mean not in reality what it will do for you but in the strategy what does it what motivates that I think and, and you know what you we said a few things you said looking for praise but you also said looking for validation hmm which is not the same as praise. Yeah, I think, I think there's something, um, there's something, the, the, harder, the hard pill that I've fa found to swallow as, as a producer, if you like, um, which is, it gets, it becomes a little earworm or something in my head is, I remember going to Sundance early on and uh, we had a film there and, and I remember, like a volunteer basically was we went to a radio station to talk about our film and the writer director was there and I was there and I considered myself up until that point as a, as a sort of as a creative producer who develops the screen you know, a third of the script was mine you know and she said oh have you thought of being a filmmaker yourself at some point and I just thought that it just stopped me in my tracks because yeah. it, and, there, and there's a sense that you know, when even recently when I made the last tree that got back to Sundance, there's a, that you know that as the as the producer you can be easily overlooked, and if and unless somebody was there, they wouldn't know what you're creative. Why does it matter to you whether they know it or not? I don't. Know. It's a question. I it's don't question. know. I don't know. But let's know. Let's find out. Let's. Find there's got to be a reason, right? Yeah, yeah. The reason doesn't change whether we know the reason or we don't know the reason. It's not going to change the reason. The only difference will be we know it versus we don't know. It. So that's what we're after yeah, is, yeah. Um, is that there's something there in which um, let's call it an X, you know, there's an X there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what is that all about? Um, it would be very easy to s try and psychologize it all, and you know, I I know this isn't therapy, so I'm I'm avoiding going down that kind of uh, route. Well, but, um, yeah, I don't need to know about mommy and daddy, but I I want to know what you think. It's about you <laughs> and your thinking. I think. Um, 
by the way, in terms of mommy and daddy, there's things you agreed with and things you didn't agree with. So you only took on the things you agreed with. So the fact that you may have originally got it from them is irrelevant since you're the one who said yes to it. I agree with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Given all the things you probably didn't agree with. Yeah. 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 So um, let's keep it in, in the ballpark. I am um... well, so they I'm I'm here here I am picturing you at the radio station in Sun in uh, Park City or wherever it was and um you, you know do you want to be a filmmaker someday she says to you like you're not a filmmaker yeah and what did you think at that moment besides that you were not given your due which was true and you weren't I, you know what it is, I think there was something in there where this combination of things of, of um, unless someone gives me permission to do something, uh, then, then I, don't, I haven't, you know, the, the gate, the gate, the gate is locked somehow. And why do you need permission? Well, I, I clearly I don't. But yeah, that's the reality side. Yeah. On the conceptual side, you do. Yeah, on the conceptual side, it's because um, well, it's almost like um, acknowledgement. I guess I'm frightened of frightened of the sort of failure. If, if I'm not given some insurance policy up front where we can see your talent, you should carry on with this. Yeah, then I'm so. worried that if I put all everything into it and it explodes back in my face. Okay, I'm gonna ask you, uh, that's helpful. I'm gonna ask you this question. And what I don't want is the consequence answer. Mm -hmm. But I wanna know what, you, what, what the real deal is, which is what's wrong with failing? See, the consequence answer is I'll be on the street starving and my children will, you know, have a terrible life and I'll end up in a yeah, yeah, yeah. poor ward and whatever. That, that's, not, that's not the question, really. The question is, you know, when you think about failing. Hmm. It, it, it's, it's part, you know, what it really is, if, if I think about it, it's part of succeeding, you know, you have to even that's your Yeah, but that's, that's as you're um, thinking a bit rationally. Yeah, but your but your, your strategy doesn't say that. See, if you actually thought that rationally, you wouldn't have any problem with failing, you'd say, Okay, that was just another okay, it's on. All right. So that time it didn't work. And now what's next? That's not what you do. You know, in a funny way, that's what you know you should do. <laughs> yeah. Which is why you can so easily say that, but it's not what you do. You don't play it that way. You play it a different way. You play it yeah. like there's something wrong with failing. And you use terms like it'll explode in my face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, listen, I think I've got enough to give what I think is a structural conclusion to what we talked about up to this point. And if it's wrong, we can, you know, go back and try to rethink it. Okay. Yeah. I have certain evidence and clues I'm going to base this on. I'm going to tell you what I think it mm -hmm. is. And we'll explore it and see if it's correct or not correct. Um, generally, it is a control strategy that you have based on fear of imagine fear, like of. fear of imaginary danger like worst case scenario and there's a couple of things that lead me to think that one is um limit input is one of the hallmarks of that strategy and for example when you avoid reading Hollywood Reporter and the other trade magazines, 
that kind of thing. Um, that uh, when I when I um, hear about the way you would go into a project and take so much on yourself, um, says you really can't trust other people. You can't trust their judgment, and maybe you don't trust them in other ways. Um, you you must think to some degree that they don't see the dangers that you see and you better you know take care of it because otherwise it'll explode or blow up in your face and you know and then you know there, there's a there's a um, right um, proper good and proper strategic way of thinking in terms of managing the various forces in play like you have to as a producer but there's a way you take it on that's not like just managing the threads. It's almost like life and death, desperation, uh, look out, it's going to crash and burn and take me with it. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So the, what's it, what's that? Let me, let me just sort of draw, draw this in terms of uh, structure. For a moment. Okay, so um, you have very strong dynamic urge. Dynamic urge is like desire, aspiration. Yeah. It also could be appetites and it could be vague hopes and dreams. But in your case, um, you're really quite quite aware of things you want to create. And then there's current reality, how it, how it is. And then there's concepts. And I call this a um, causal set, because these are diff three different forces in play. Robert, will I get to watch this afterwards myself? Yeah. Yeah. So these these things combine and what the structure always looks for every structure looks for equilibrium. And the structural dynamic in physics is that things are looking for equilibrium. So for example, if we set up a tension, it will strive for resolution because the the contrast that creates a tension is looking to to resolve the differences. In this case, um, come on, go. In this case, this causal set creates feedback loop, but it's not able to accomplish equilibrium uh, because when you're, you know, my two rubber band thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So at your when you're at the desire stage. Well, actually, let me describe that differently. When you're at the um, outcome stage, you know, you're, you're focused on the outcome and you're over here. This rubber band is really quite relaxed, but this one's really stretched. And this is where mm -hmm. the concept comes in. So this is what you must think when you're successful is look out. The other shoe is about to fall. Be careful. Is that how you usually feel? Um, can you say that last bit again? When, when you have success, mm -hmm. it's actually the point of most tension in the structure. And then in a way, the, the most conflict in the structure, because you're thinking, um, not that you're doing this consciously, by the way. It's not a yeah, yeah, in, in a way. You thinking, oh, um, I'm being successful. Um, look out. Yeah, in a way, um, it's right because even when we did get Sundance with our film a couple of years ago, I, I, I remember being quite uptight while we were there, for all, rather than celebratory. Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit of celebration, but it yeah, was. Yeah. I don't, I didn't feel at ease. 
uh, waiting for something, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, right. So, um, a, go ahead. I had a flashback to a memory, uh, to a, something in my past as a young, as a boy. Is that relevant to, do you want me to? What, are you, what is it? Well, it was, it was this thing of um, something you said triggered the thought of it, and I wondered if it was related. But when I was uh, three and a half, my um, younger brother was, uh, there was a tragic accident and he was killed right in front of oh, our Oh, my God. Yeah. In front of our house. Um, oh, that'll do it. And I remember the, the circumstances. I, I had a false memory about it till I was about 20, but I was there when it happened. But he basically escaped from a back garden and escaped on his bike. So he took his initiative, escaped from the garden, got on his bicycle, went where he yeah. wanted to go, which is, and he ended up in front of a, of, a, of a parked vehicle that pulled off before anybody realized he was there. I think that's um, actually uh, very relevant in the sense that um, from that, you made a conclusion about life. You know, it's the, the concepts that people have are not um, usually repressed areas of consciousness where they're experiencing whatever it is. And they're, you know, it's more of like, that's over. But what's not over is the conclusion you made about life, mm -hmm. which then becomes the concept that you then guide yourself based on. Mm -hmm. I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. What, what we have to explore is whether your idea about the dangers of the world is accurate. Mm -hmm. See, because what your strategy would be to think about worst case scenario, which then creates a degree of conflict, which you then react to the conflict, mm -hmm. which is to control and if, by the way, it looks like it's not quite as bad as, as it needs to be to control things, <laughs> you, you uh, would limit the input that it's okay and say, well, wait, no, it's not as okay as you think it is. There's all, there's all these possibilities that you don't see. Yeah. Um, but in reality, The, there's two aspects of this. One is the difference between imaginary risk and actual risk. And they're not the same. No. Yeah. You think about your career and the actual risk is if you fail at something, you know, okay, so there's another day and you learn whatever you learned from it and you don't make those mistakes again and you try to, you know, position it better so you have a firmer foundation next time out. Yeah. That's reality. But in the concept, it's, um, it's over, you know, you're going to be completely devoured blow up in your yeah. face is your term it's that imposter syndrome you know you'll get the tap on the shoulder and like oh yeah we, we've we found you now no it's uh, much worse yeah so, and, then, <laughs> and then we'll shoot you at dawn <laughs> yeah no this is worse because this says no matter how good you are and you could be really great you better look out, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that is worse. Yeah. That's yeah. really horrible. That's yeah. uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah. But what's reality in terms of risk? Really minimal, actually. Because um, even if I, even I was just thinking about the jobs for hire stuff, you know, because you're as good as your last show, but um, I've done stuff that's. The reality now is that I've done stuff at a level where even if I fail at the next one for whatever you have a track, reason, yeah. What you're saying is you have a track record, so you're as good. At, you're as good as your track record. 
professionally. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, even if I fail the next show, um, I would still, there would still be plenty of work. Of, you know, we wouldn't starve. Is that, yeah. you, know, that you know, we just, and there's always two, you know, there are other producers I know are like, eh, yeah, I got fired off of that job, but, you know, I didn't get on, you know, the, the exec was a hmm. whatever. Because they have a different structure going on than you do. Yeah, they're like, you know, it's their loss if they don't see my talent. Whereas I'd be like, oh, I must be, I tend to um, yeah. think I must have failed in some way if it hasn't gone right, you know, and that, that's a hell of a, a pressure. And it's not very comfortable. So well, I but compensate for it's it. It's because you have to understand, it's because you're not living in reality. Reality is different than the way you, your concept of risk is different than the actual risk. Mm. So if you were living in reality, you would think, oh, well, here's the actual risk. And is it worth taking this road or that road or doing it this way or doing it that way? You know, you'd, you'd manage um, the risk accordingly. But with worst case scenario, you can't do that. You have to manage, you have to control everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in reality, um, how much of control do you actually have? In reality, I have um, only a degree of control over my own. Sorry, you froze there for a moment. Can, can you say that again, please? Yeah, only a, only a degree of control over my own actions, but over over the outcome and the you know, I can't control what other people do. I can't control mm -hmm. whether there's a tornado or not when we're filming, you know. Yeah, thinking, yeah absolutely. It's, all, it's, I can look after my, tend, tend to my corner of the universe. Yeah. I want you to say this and see to what degree it's true. <clears throat> I can't control what I cannot control. I can't control what I cannot control. Mm -hmm. Is that true or not true? It's true. The strategy says you can. You, you know, the strategy says, look, look how hard I'm trying. Look how hard I'm working. So universe, you better cooperate. Because look how hard I'm trying. And you got to reciprocate to your part. And your part, by the way, is don't create a disaster. <laughs> but you can imagine this, the stress that you're chronically under. Trying to prevent um, disaster from breaking up. The moment you, um, quote, take your foot off the accelerator. Yeah. Which is your phrase. I thought that was an interesting phrase when I read it, the way you described the story. And, it, and uh, I, at that point, I had no idea what we would find, by the way. It wasn't like, oh, I saw that and then I knew. It, not at all. It's only as we've been talking that I've sort of pieced together um, what, what you're up to. And um, what we need to do now is sort of teach you reality. And the reality is, first of all, um, you don't know how much risk there might be in a situation. You know the probability. You can see the patterns. You can see, oh, it's probably okay to park my car here and probably not okay to park my car there. You know, there's, there's um, a accommodation of uh, acceptable risk and unacceptable risk. Yeah. And that's 
just reality. That's that's sort of you're steeped in reality when you're making those kinds of decisions. <clears throat> but um, in a literal sense, you never know what's going to happen next. So um, we actually don't know the actual level of risk. We only know the probability. Yeah. So um, can you say once again, I can't control what I can't control? Um, I can't control what I can't control. I can't control what I can't control. So if you find yourself trying to control what you can't control, um, you know right off the bat, you're not steeped in reality. What's your life looking right like at this point in our session? What's what, you know as you're looking at your life, and you know you had that going on. Now you know that ha you had that going on. Um, are you having any insight uh, about the future? Yeah, there's a little bit of um, recognition that some of the, the sort of structure I'm setting up is quite an oppressive one. And as you said, it's a very stressful one. And um, in a way, it makes me um, weigh up some of the opportunities there in a quite a somber way, if you like, because it's quite, there's a, there's a sort of, a, and I'm looking at three projects right now, you know, I'm, um, and, they've, and, and the bit of me is filled with, fear about them because there's any number of ways in which any any of them could back go wrong backfire mm -hmm. um and be a huge responsibility if i if i try to control uh, what i can't control um so i can see how but, but listen let's just take the you, those projects though um <clears throat> I mean, certainly you want to set it up so you have the highest probability of success. Of course. Yeah. And if you're not in the way and you just do your job, in other words, the concept is no longer in the, in the structure. What you're left with is structural tension, you know, end result, current reality, no concept. And the concept, so the reality is my rational side, and the concept is the just. Uh, yeah, all, all concepts are uh, fiction. Fiction. Why do you have concepts? You don't have a concept about the color of your, your eyes or <laughs> where you live. You know where you live. Yeah. People, people have concepts in light of not knowing what reality is. Okay. Yeah. I want you to say I can't control what I can't control, or I can't control what I can't control. That's <laughs> sorry for my control. American accent here. <laughs> but can can you just say that about five or six times? And as you say it, really see the implication it has for you in your life. Mm -hmm. Because in your life, you have actually acted as if you could control what you can't control. I can't control what I 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 can't control. Mm -hmm. Is that true or not true? It's true. Mm -hmm. What's the implication of it being true? Why, why might that be important for you to know? Well, it means I'm not responsible for everyone else 
and everyone's path mm -hmm. and everyone's experience and everyone's opinion. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to try to manage it. I don't have to, I mean, one of my, um, I think I have a tendency to over explain and, and my emails are quite long and it's because I'm trying to control or manage a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so they absolutely understand that this is the degree of reaction appropriate to mm -hmm. this event. Whereas if I just take, deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Take, let's take two. It's the Sundance, uh, uh, radio station, uh, Thing. And she turns to you and she says, oh, do you hope to be a filmmaker someday? And your answer is, well, I'm one right now. That's why I'm here. And that's by the way, why did you think I wasn't? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I said. I said the first bit. I didn't say the second bit. I just took offense and resented her. <laughs> well, I did. When I said it without offense, I just said, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, how come you're so stupid? You don't, I get a filmmaker right in front of you. Why did you see, you know, what do you, what well, do you I did. I, I, it was, it was. But I, did, I said it without the resentfulness, you know, without yeah, yeah. the dagger. <laughs> but, I was shocked by my own reaction, you know. I, I, was, yeah. I was taken by the fact that I was so inside, prickly, and I said, well, I actually consider yeah. myself as a filmmaker. Cause... And then I well, probably... Yeah, but, had... You know, you also probably have an identity thing going along, going along with that as well as the control strategy. But I think the control strategy almost runs the identity one. Yeah, I think the identity thing is an interesting one because a lot of people, you know, the number of people that think a producer is just the money man, which for me is like I bristle every time yeah. someone. Well, do you still? I do a bit. What I find myself. Well, you know what? Think, you can't control what they think. Why? Because I can't control what I can't control. <laughs> So do you still bristle? <laughs> I mean, it's not to say I'd rather have them be knowledgeable than completely ignorant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, that's a preference. But to have a, a, a reaction, you know, it's like... Actually, oh. that's a really good point, because it's a load off if I don't have to teach everybody I, I meet about what a producer does. Yeah. You know, in my head, I think I've got to correct this. Yes, but in reality, what's, what's your observation? In reality, most people don't know and misunderstand. Yeah, that's the reality. And I, I understand you know, for the most idea. part, even when you're explaining it, for the most part, they probably don't even want to know. Thanks very much. No. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's where you get an automatic, oh, shit, reaction. Oh, shit, I'm getting an explanation about what a producer does. I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah let's stay with a bit, this a bit longer okay because I'd like you to kind of get the understanding of what the underlying structure has been and what an underlying and what it takes to change the underlying structure is for you to steep yourself in reality and not in the concept and the fiction. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So take a look at these three projects you're, you're thinking about or you're about to work with yeah what's it look now in reality um well what's interesting about the i can't control what i can't control is is that there, there are three projects this is from a sort of freelance producer for hire element um that are in the ether right <clears> now <throat> one is one was apparently landed but it's not actually greenlit another is um off into the distance mm -hmm. a bit less fully greenlit and another one seems to be aggressively coming towards me um mm -hmm. like we want you to do it what you know what does it take for us to 
-hmm. and then and then each one of them have um international elements quite exciting well, do you want to do you want to do, do them well let me do you want to do uh the one that's coming at you uh yes but a bit of me i've been a year and a half invested in the other one that's sort of still flickering and i've been on i've sort of been on the been on the payroll but um it's still not green lip and it's it's feels like it's stumbling um well it might be that doesn't answer my question i don't know enough the reality is i don't know enough about this this one that's coming at me and i have a call tomorrow okay okay that's good so just you just in that case you just need to find out more to know if you want to do it or not. i need to find out more and what has what happens if it turns out you don't want to do it um that's a good question as well because and what's a good answer I don't want to do it, then that sh then I'd like to think that would be my reality. And I would say so rather than think, well, yeah, but I've look, if you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. That's, that's the thing. The question is, what will you do, given you don't want to do it? Yeah. And the answer is, see, if there's only two possibilities, you either do it or you don't do it. And my question is, if it turns out you don't want to do it, which of those two possibilities will you decide? I'll say I don't want to do it. I won't do it. Okay. I won't do it. Yeah. I've, I know, and I know that with certainty because actually. Well, uh, I know that before you would have done it and you would have hesitated and you would have taken it on and you would have had doubts and you would have compromised and it would have worked for a while. And that would have, uh, there would be something missing, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, you, you do your pattern. Uh, this is not about um, what's the right behavior to your pattern. This is about what causes your pattern. So you would say yes to it if you thought that there was risk in saying no. You, you know what I mean? And, and the world would explode if you said no. So you better say yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Part of a control strategy. Yes. Just. You know, when you can be in desire about something, you just you see the glittering lights of a project, yeah. but you're not fully engaging with the reality as well. Um these three projects each have a lot of glittering lights but the, the i have in the in the last two three weeks i have yeah. been offered stuff that i've just said i've read it that's too violent or i've read it that's too um mundane or i've read it and i don't like yeah. the feel of the team so they're very clear cut i've just said no well you when you do that yeah. you're really in a different structure right yeah Whereas these three projects, um, I, I think I really need more info to be able to have a clear cut understanding yeah. whether it's well, a yes or absolutely no. absolutely fine, you know, but the point is that you can't control what you can't control. And if, if there's enough there as an organizing principle to get involved, then you can do that. You can say yes to that if you want. And there's no guarantee it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this is the thing about it, though, is you're you, you quite often in that strategy, you're looking for what did you call it insurance or I think I, I forgot you, you used a term that um, implies uh, some guarantee of success. some safety, yeah, some safety net or something that oh, yeah. yeah. At the same time, what's curious is when I resolved to do TV, I found myself, um, I heard this thing that women tend to underplay their skills more than men. Men will big themselves up in an interview. Women will underplay themselves. And I think I've been more on the feminine. I, I would, mm. previously would have gone in sort of selling myself down a bit. 
Uh -huh. why, why are you telling me this? Because I did go, I started going for um, TV roles where I, I, I felt like, well, I've you, never done that before. But you know what? That's still a different way of playing your control strategy. In what way? Well, you, even to think about how you did that, whether you were over the top or in just exactly right or under understated. You're trying um, to control what you can't control. Yeah, I mean, you know. not being authentic in a sense. Not well, being yourself. It, it, you know, it's a little like: is there a match between what you're offering on the level of professional services and what they're hiring? Yeah. If there's an adequate match, you know, you, you've got a basis of doing business, and if there isn't, you don't. Yeah. Um, and that's that's. Um, not even about your personality, really, or whether they like you. I mean, of course, it's always better if people like each other and all that, and you get along. But the question in that setting is, we have this um, very complicated job that you know how to do. Are you the right guy for the job? Yeah. And, and, and if the answer is yes, then let's do business, you know? So that's basically... Mm -hmm. You see how there's no anything weird going on in that kind of. Yeah, I think early on to get in that sort of moving from film to TV, it was a lot of um, I, a sense. This control thing was about how do I sell myself properly? Yeah. And whereas now the conversations are much more, yeah. you know, you can do it. Are you a fit for this project? And I've, I have genuinely right. noticed a shift in the last few you know, the last year. Yeah, and, and you know, you don't have a control strategy in every part of your life. And in fact, that part of your life is not. Um, it's more based on structural tension than structural conflict. Mm -hmm. And you're less um, in your uh, aim. Sorry, you broke up there, Robert. Less you're, in... you're, less, you're less in your conceptual frame. Right. Let me sort of draw this for you. And, um, you know, I think we're close to being done and I want to check it out where we are. Uh, so, as I said, you know, you've got your dynamic urge and you have uh, current reality, however it is, and then you have these concepts. Well, concept, you have a concept, which is the world is dangerous. Mm -hmm. In fact, let me just... Danger. <laughs> And um, if we said, okay, what's, what's really true in reality? Well, we don't know what we don't know, and we can't control what we can't control. So we can control what we can control, like you show up for work, you do a good job, you know, all the stuff that's within your means of control, you can control, but then you can't control whether somebody gets sick or um, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the, uh, if you understand the difference between reality and the concept. And you understand the concept is fiction, but reality is real. In which sometimes you know things, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you'll be able to control things and sometimes you won't be able to. In the meantime, you're still working toward the outcome. What happens is this, this disappears, this goes away. Not that you, by the way, don't think it to be true on some level, because on some level you've made that conclusion about the world. But if you're not um, in that realm, it's not, it, it'll just go somewhere else, you know, like someplace else. What you're left with is structural tension in which, uh, you know, uh, you have the difference between current reality and your vision. Mm -hmm. Current reality. In current reality, you have whatever risk or other kinds of things are there, including resources, capacity, abilities, talent, whatever it is. And then you take action in relationship to this. And this is a tension resolution system. So you set up the proper tension, which then leads to resolution. So if things happen, which they always will, that are beyond your control, uh, you might have ways of of 
going a different route or finding another way or maybe mm -hmm. you know not figuring it out at all and what's the next step anyway mm -hmm. but the the point is you're not trying to take the burden on of everything you will not feel burnt out at the end of a project you'll feel energy yeah you know you, you'll feel um like you're ready to do the next one <laughs> and that's the kind of change that we're we're talking about a change of underlying structure because the premise that you didn't know you probably didn't know that you had is to the degree to which you thought the world is dangerous and life is dangerous and and maybe it did come from the experience of uh seeing your brother die which is you can imagine how legitimately you came to that conclusion mm -hmm. you know and you were too young to really have yeah. any kind of uh, understanding of how to put that into its proper perspective exactly. so then it became an underlying premise of your life mm -hmm. yeah How are you feeling right now? Um, uh, a little bit um, reflective, and uh, some of the I, I feel still I feel like I'm still chasing after some of the concepts from this session. So I think. Uh, what are you chasing after? Let's um, let's figure that out to, here and now. Well, just how to I I. I I was kind of how to know how to shift from the <laughs> the day I, I didn't quite fully understand how I get from in, into an advancing structure from the the the, the you you realize the, reality you live in reality and in reality what's true I can't control what I can't control right but in your concept you can Right, okay. So it's just shed that side. No, it's look at reality and get it straight. Right. Okay. It's not getting rid of something. It's like seeing it for what it is, so that you're really steeped in reality, yeah. you know, um, rather than uh, your, you, you, your worst, case, worst case scenario comes from not looking. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yes, 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 yes. So when you're doing your television work, you probably are pretty aware of what the risks are and, you know, sure. what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And I'll do this, but I won't do that. So, and that's a different structure. That's where you don't have this going on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and being a filmmaker, that's such a big thing for you. Say that again. What is it about you being a filmmaker that's such a big deal for you? I think it's um, it's that thing of giving us, giving humanity a little bit of more insight about itself in a way of you know seeing what we sure, are. Capable. Yeah, yeah, that's about making films. That's not about you being a filmmaker. Yeah, um, you, you know, I, I, and I'm, I really, it's, it's, I'm just wondering if maybe this has changed in the last few minutes, but, um, I mean, you, you can take pride in being a professional and being a filmmaker and that level of, of, you know, I really appreciate what that takes to do that job. And I like that job and I like doing that job. And I'm really quite grateful I get to do that job. That's not quite a, about identity. That's more of appreciation. Identity is, you know, it's me. I'm the filmmaker. Don't call me a producer. <laughs> I feel like that little that part of me is a little bit lost, really. I mean, there's something in me that there's there is a pro, you know there's something in me that wants to um, still make 
make a film in Japan, a feature film, but I sort of don't go there too often. Um, and life seems broader anyway, the sort of the... Well, you want to do that because you want to do that. Yeah, I want to do that because I want to do that, exactly. What do you mean you don't go there? You did go there. I mean, I don't go there in my head too often about, you know, at the moment I'm not giving myself a hard time about, well, why aren't I writing this project? Or why, why am I not spending time? I'm sort of... Oh, I see. You're not, you're not giving your, you, you're not controlling yourself. Too. I'm not trying to, yeah, hold myself up yeah. as ready to slap myself down, but I, I yeah. don't, I don't believe it's gone away and I don't think um, mm. it's too late, but at the moment... Okay, now, I want to just show you one more thing. Mm. Uh, wait, sorry. Okay, so what you're describing is what we describe as uh, mo conflict manipulation. The uh, conflict, the intensity of the conflict drives the action. Mm -hmm. But the action is designed to reduce the in intensity of the conflict. So this becomes an oscillating pattern. You know, more conflict leads to more action, which reduces the conflict. Which then leads to less future action because the conflict was motivated by action. This is, by the way, weight too. You were talking about weight, you know, um, conflict. The emotional conflict of being overweight leads to action, and you. And so you, you're good. Uh, you you do well for a while, and then you lose the weight, and then the emotional conflict reduces, and then that leads to less motivation for future action, and then you fall off the wagon. Yeah. And that's, um, so when you do things this way, there'll always be an oscillating pattern because it's driven by conflict. And this is one of the ways, by the way, you try to control yourself. Yeah. It is through uh, setting up uh, conflict. No, I mean, there's a lot of work in making a film. I, I certainly know that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But there's a, um, in, in your strategy, in your, in your strategy though, it, it could be in individual moments where you're uh, driving something that takes 10 minutes, but it's conflict driven versus outcome driven. So I, I don't know yet that you really quite uh, get the implication the fully of that you can't control what you can't control. Because if you did, you'd say, wait a second, it's, you know. You, you know, you still might be looking, okay, how do I control, given that I now know that to be true, how do I control it? Right. <laughs> and on the other side of that, by the way, is freedom. Of that issue you know you're free to stop trying to you know yeah 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 but i did that that one thing i did you know for amanda's um book launch yeah it was it, nice yeah it was nice but i didn't care what it it was exactly as i imagined it and it yeah. took no time at all and it was a very um it was a smooth process which is so that there was a liberating element to it, which, yeah. which is hard to do with this, what you've said about it. So it wasn't a conflictual structure. It was, um, yeah, it was, I don't want to real do it. Cre but it was real it. creating. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so funny because you're in the creating business. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not, <laughs> in a way, you're not using the creative process as part of your, um, yeah. you know, the deal. <laughs> Part of your modus operandi. I turned it into an S and M camp, you know. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. So, what torture will you face today? <laughs> yeah, what torture can I set up? Make it harder. Yeah, make it painful. Yeah. I, I am. I, I, and I, then you wonder why you physically feel like shit. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I have the, the, the door is open to it. I, I think I can see. I see, I see, I see. I think I see. Good. It's important that you see what reality is independent of your concept of it. Yeah. Because you'll see your concept of it does not stand up to scrutiny. Yeah. Okay, I want you to try something else out as a statement and see if it's true in reality. Are you ready? Yes. There's nothing I have to do. There's nothing I have to do. Is that true? I like that one. I like that one. Is it true or not true? There's nothing I have to do. I'm hearing echoes of all the things you think you have to do. Yeah, constant things I have to do, but um, but you have to do them. That's the uh, that's you know the. You've made this whole thing about I got to do this and I got to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this, but in reality, there's nothing. I mean, do you have to even live, really? No. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have to live, how can there be anything else you have to do? The key word there is have to, like obligation versus yeah, yeah, of course, Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Okay, now look, say that three or four times just to teach it to yourself. Because the another premise you have is as many things you, you're obligated to do. Yeah. And that's another aspect of controlling yourself, by the way, is through I gotta do these things and it turns into conflict and then you take action. And then, you know, at the end of that kind of a cycle, you don't feel elated, you feel relief. You know, yeah. like thank God that's that's over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's there's nothing I have to do. There's nothing I have to do. Is that true or not true? It's true. There's nothing I have to do. Okay. So if you really get this, everything else is a plus. Uh, let's let's do let's be quite specific. Um, I don't have to make film. I don't have to make film. True or not true? True. Yeah. When you do things you don't have to do, there's a certain pleasure in that. By the way. Yeah. Which is so different than you know I'm obligated to you know blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. Get in the rat race. Yeah. Yeah. What's your life looking like now as you're looking at you can't control what you can't control? You don't know what you don't know. And you, there's nothing you have to do. A lot looser. Mm. And lighter. Mm. and more space yeah mm. does the word uh, freedom come to mind freer came to mind <laughs> okay if it's freer what is it you're not free about given there's nothing you have to do maybe it was uh, persuading everyone else so there's a sort of um you don't have to do that. I don't have to control. You don't have to. Don't you, have to there's nothing you have to do. You don't. They, you know, roll your own. I mean, they're up, it's up to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Ironically, that's what I always say I'm after with. Um, even this path really it's like freedom but i turn it into a sort of turn myself into the jailer prison guard yeah obligation yeah you, you yeah. make it in. yeah because you would to to manipulate yourself because 
you you think there's something you have to do and left to your own devices, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. 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 But if there's nothing, if you really get this, I mean, here, here's the thing. I, if you really get this, understand this is reality. You know, we're born, we have a lifespan, and then we die. And mm. that period, you know, is ours. And there's really nothing you have to do. You might, it might turn out there's some things you want to do. Yeah. And you don't have to do them. Yeah. Because yeah. I know with you, with your dynamic urge, there's many things you want to do. Uh, for example, the Japanese project. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, um, any questions for me? Or do you think we're done? <sighs> Yeah, no, I think we're done. I think um, I, 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 I want to reflect on the session and review it, but... Um, what was it like, people want to know, what was it like for you going through this uh, process with me? From a client point of view. Yeah, yeah it was... Um, it was illuminating challenging at times um i felt a bit uncomfortable in parts because you know there's a bit of me thinking oh i should have done more prep should have done more we should have read all of your books you know the, that side of things um and i think the coming in with the question you know, what should we talk about today uh, was i need i was thrown by that because mm -hmm. I think there's just been a bit of time between when I first emailed you and then sent the, you know, the two stories in. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of almost organically evolved towards just, I'm just going to turn up today and good. trust the yeah, process. Yeah. But it was, it's been, um, it's been good's not the word, but um, yeah, pretty, uh, I felt in good hands. Yeah. What what uh, what may have surprised you about the session? Because I think there were some points where you discovered things you didn't know. Um, well, the, the 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 predictability of my structure was uh, just fantastic because when I looked at those examples, mm -hmm. the events came to mind very clearly, so I can own that and and that makes me think wow you know um that's not a structure i want to keep um encouraging so um yeah that was a surprise um i think this emphasis on reality you know the, my concept of reality being way off i pride myself on being a discerning kind of guy so the idea that i've got this around myself this huge blind spot of a, of a concept that is not mm. all mapped across there. And I'm forever trying to uh, explain and, you know, slip, mm. you know, just to, just control um, other people's reaction to me or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. When actually people are always going to misunderstand uh, things if they choose well, to. Not always. Well, not always. Well, not always. Yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. they'll get it, sometimes they won't. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Earth, planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, and also um, trusting myself to, if, if if there is a massive misunderstanding, then communicating then in a way that may or may not resolve it if if it needs to be resolved. Or well, you can't control what you can't control. Can control what you can't control. So. And there's nothing you have to do. Yeah. There's so. Nothing there are things you want to do, though. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, well, that's the good, that's the good just thing. Because, just because there's nothing you have to do doesn't mean you don't want to do things. You want to do a lot of things. It clears the clears the path a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. There's, all, there's, there's a few, there are much fewer things mm. that um, get in the way of 
discovering those urges and 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 it's good enough to want to do them i don't have to have a reason um there is no reason yeah actually there's nothing you have to do what could be the reason <laughs> <laughs> i mean there are things you have to do phys physically to, to stay alive you got to breathe air you have to have enough food and water you yeah, have yeah. to stay warm you know uh that's about it yeah it's not very good what we want we want other things too you know quality of life good health meaningful work yeah yeah well great well thank you so much. um any last uh, reports about how you're feeling um i uh, grateful. Thank you very much. Appreciate this session and all your support over the last little while. And um, yeah, a bit lighter and inspired, yeah, to really take a look at this. And it's going to be very helpful because I have got, I've not been looking forward to the next couple of weeks of decision making, but actually I just look at it a bit differently now, I think. Yeah, good. Great. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording and please stay on though because I want to talk to you a bit. Okay.